Welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. Today I'm reviewing Amazon's original series, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And the first thing I should say about this review is that you should adjust your expectations. If you are taking your expectations from the Mr. and Mrs. Smith's, Mr. and Mrs. Smith's movie with Angelina and Brad Pitt, then I think you're going to come in this the wrong way. It's actually based off of the original series, which not a lot of people have watched or even heard about it. I'm Mrs. Smith. I asked a number of people and they were like, there's a series. Yeah, there is. And that's what this is more based off of. So if you adjust your expectation as it's not the film, it's just another Mr. and Mrs. Smith in the world of agents where agents are called Mr. and Mrs. Smiths. <laughs> so let's jump in. Two lonely strangers land jobs working for a mysterious spy agency that offers them a glorious life of espionage, wealth, world travel, and a dream brownstone in Manhattan. The catch, new identities in an arranged marriage as Mr. and Mrs. John and Jane Smith. Now hitched, John and Jane navigate a high-risk mission every week while also facing a new relationship milestone. Their complex cover stories becomes even more complicated when they catch real feelings for each other. What's riskier, espionage or marriage? So there were a, a number of, I guess, directors and creators and writers trying to explain what this series is so that people go in with the right expectations. One of them was this is love and marriage uh, with action. If you've ever seen the love and marriage series, the, the comedy series that was always about them arguing and bickering, there was a light comedic tone to that. And love and marriage, love and marriage. And I think that's what they were hoping that these eight episodes are. Now, the, the ranging length of the episodes are actually quite short, so it's fairly easy to binge if that's your, your sort of thing. They're going to be dropping all episodes at once, I believe. Uh, as far as I was looking at the release dates and the do not reveals, <laughs> it's like, do not reveal this, do not reveal this. Uh, I think they're all dropping at the same time. So I don't get the comedic light tone that I think they wanted to take from the movie, because it's definitely... Um, mimicking some I guess interactions what I saw from Brad and Angelina our two main protagonists here uh, we've got the fantastic Don uh, Donald Glover who plays John Smith and Maya Erskine uh, not Erskine Erskine who plays Jane Smith you've got some minor roles like Paul Dana Dana who plays the neighbor you have Park Posey Wagner Mira Alexander Skarsgård Ron Perlman there are a few well-known actors in this playing various roles but for the most part our two protagonists are Donald Glover and Maya Erskine playing John and Jane Smith. <laughs> this series, strangely enough, takes the tack of this is a very uh, broken up relationship-esque made up marriage that they have to work out their eccentricities of who they are as people but obviously in the mix there's also spies but it really does concentrate at what is going on at the home life rather than the missions so we do get to see them go on a few exotic locations and when the action is there it's done in a way that's more realistic than the action blockbuster than Mr. and Mrs. Smith is this is more sort of handheld kind of docu style in the action sequences and then when they're at home it's like tripod so it's very kind of still and rigid in that way trying to create the differences between the missions and the home life and when we're at home they're bickering and arguing they can't seem to get on you you you, you wonder like why they're even trying but can they just leave this relationship that they've kind of been forced into because they now work with this agency and we all know what happens to people when they try and leave these kind of black op agency cia undercover whatever you can't just leave those things that's not a thing that happens apparently <laughs> i don't know because i've never been in one of those but they take the tack that it's kind of really dry dark comedy and there were a couple of moments in the series that i was laughing or giggling at the circumstances our characters fi uh, find us now when donald glover reacts to a circumstance in a weird way for me that worked a lot i found my uh, Erskine's character Jane Smith really hard to like for a majority of the series Donald Glover's character John Smith I got behind more not just because I'm a man and I like men more. no <laughs> the the character they made her out to be really rigid and hard and tough to like there is a growing of our characters as, as you would expect from a series like this but for me, I still can't help compare it to the movie because the movie did all of what the series did 
it tells the story that I wanted to tell. It tells the, the relationship where they started, how they met, how they find out about each other and then um, try and kill each other in the movie. And then they go off and, you know, live happily ever after sort of thing. That is what this series tried to do, but it takes the stances where they come in, they both know their agents and then work out their issues and go on missions together. There's a lot of similarity to the movie as well compared to the series. So even though it's not really based on the movie, it is. Uh, so you can say it's the same story. You're going to see all the same tags and you might, if you enjoy the film, you can't help but compare it to those moments. So if you can do your best to put it outside of your mind, then I think you'll enjoy the, what this series is. I think the acting is good with what the story they've been given, but I can't help but think, yeah, but I've seen this movie. It's done the story arc completely in one two hour segment of a movie and yeah we have seven hours which if i feel like you've been stretching out that marriage bit and it just at some points it's just depressing to watch because you guys just aren't getting over your marriage issues the parts in the movie where they were um going to see a psychiatrist that was really light-hearted and fun this time around is just depressing and you're like oh my gosh why am i watching a series about mr and mrs smith that should be light-hearted and fun where they go out on missions and, you know, ah, you've added peas. Did you do something new? I added peas. Ah, peas. You know, that sort of thing that I was hoping the levity would enjoy. I wanted to really enjoy this. They are fun moments and I like the, the spy stuff. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Even when I saw what they were doing and I had adjusted my expectations, it still wasn't what I wanted it to be. I feel like this series could have been three episodes. The first one introducing who our characters are. The third one kind of introducing where the relationship is and what happens. And then the last one, which for me is the best episode out of the lot. Because they've been building up to it but you kind of know what's going to happen at the end because if you've seen the movie and you've seen the series you have completely the right idea of where this story is going to go the crazy thing is it does leave us on a massive cliffhanger they obviously want to carry on the story they're obviously thinking they're getting a second series but if we don't because you know the world is topsy-turvy and we don't know when we're going to get the second series even if it's green that'll probably be two years i doubt it'll come back next year straight away then you've left off us on this massive cliffhanger which is a strange place to leave it if you've seen the movie i'm sorry i'm comparing it so much to the film it's really hard for me not to it's what i have to gravitate towards when i've seen the story being told before where they leave us is where the arc starts getting good and that's the story I wanted to see more of. It's the reason why I say that we needed that first episode, middle episode, last episode, and then really getting into the arc. Because the first half of this series doesn't really have any story arc. It's more about the marriage, the relationship, the brokenness of the, the relationship. How they're going to continue doing their jobs as spies if they're so broken in their relationship and how they just can't get on. Uh, in various ways. One doesn't like to read, one likes to read. One's lying about one thing, one's lying about another thing. They're snooping on each other. That sort of thing is played out to fruition constantly in each episode as they take on new missions and see if they can pass them and become the spies within love and marriage sort of storyline. And so there's a lot to like about this series and there's a lot to like about the characters because they bring a lot to it. And there were moments in this, I was like, I'm really enjoying this bit. That last episode was spectacular really tense great action well-built characters up to that moment and then where they leave us was so frustrating because i really wanted the story kind of to start from there maybe given us a couple of episodes to build up to that but move on from that story i've seen more of the story that they have in this series in the movie which is crazy to me so once you've seen the eight episodes let me know what you think are you comparing it are you very finding it really hard to to put it aside I think if this series was named something else, then people will give this a much higher rating and enjoy it. But if you have any sort of comparison, you can't help but thinking about the action fun movie that Mr. and Mrs. Smith is. Not necessarily a great movie, but is fun. The levity, the enjoyment. Here we have a very dry sort of comedy moments, broken marriage a lot of the moments, and then some action intertwined into that. It's very well filmed, it's very well created, it's very well put together. Some of the editing I would have changed up. There's a whole episode that's basically psychiatry. I would have put the psychiatry bit in the end of each episode, it's like the sort of to mark moments of the like, what did you go through this? I think that would have worked better, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm gonna give this three 
maybe three and a half Nicolas Cages out of five. <laughs> and you got one. I think it deserves a three. I want to give it higher because I love some of the filming techniques, the action moments, that last episode is great. And I love the actors, all the characters that the actors play in this. I think they were cool. So yeah, I'm really mixed up about this. Love to hear your point of view. Can't wait to hear what you guys think about this in the comments. Hope you found this informative and enjoyed this. Loads of stuff going on on the Ruby Tuesday. Don't forget every Sunday, except this week we have a Saturday live with Movies and Munchies where we're doing the best thing that we watched. So if you want to catch that, that is 4 p.m. UK time. So you'll have to work out whatever time zone you're in. And our Patreon, we now have like 90 different videos in our Patreon, which starts at one pound. All the information in the description below. Thank you so much for being a part of the Ruby Tuesday. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long Tuesday.